Hello everyone, I'm Recrypt and today I'm going to show you how to build a semi-automatic clay farm. I say semi-automatic because a fully automatic clay farm is not really worth making in vanilla Minecraft. I'll explain why soon. But first let me show you how clay is made. To make clay, all you need is a piece of pointed dripstone, a random block, a dirt block and a water bottle. Arrange your blocks like this, any random block here, a pointed dripstone attached to the underside and then a dirt block on top of the random block. Finally, use a water bottle on the dirt block to turn it into a mud block. Now all you have to do is wait for the pointed dripstone to draw out the water from the mud block, drying it out. Once the mud block has dried out, you are left with a clay block. All you have to do is harvest it with a shovel to get clay balls. Alternatively, you can use silk touch to get the clay block itself. From my test, a mud block drying out into a clay block can happen instantly or take anywhere up to 30 minutes. This test of 155 mud blocks took around 27 minutes to dry out. For those of you who just want to farm clay manually, tile these same blocks like this. Here I have a 5 wide arrangement of a manual clay farm. You can make this as long as you need it to be, but make sure you keep it 5 wide or less because this is how far the player can reach when using water bottles on the dirt blocks. So from here I can crouch to stop myself from jumping onto the dirt blocks. I then use water bottles on all the dirt in this line. Once done, I move to the next line and repeat. I've also used waterlogged stairs here to make filling up glass bottles with water quick and easy. Once done, wait for the mud to dry out, harvest the clay, replace the dirt and then repeat the whole process until you get your desired amount of clay. This manual clay farm is great to get you started before making a semi-automatic version, but in the long term this is extremely tedious, so ideally you want to automate as much of this process as you possibly can. The only parts we can't automate are the placing of dirt blocks, because there is no way to place dirt blocks automatically in Minecraft without an incredibly large redstone contraption that consumes a ridiculous amount of bone meal and unfortunately dispensers and droppers can't place blocks but if you did want to completely automate a clay farm then i encourage you to go watch il mango's automatic clay farm video and his auto mud farm video these are both really great videos and farms by il mango but you'll have to combine both farms to get a complete clay farm but i think that these designs were a little too much for the average minecraft player which is why i recommend going down the semi-automatic route the other element that isn't practical to automate is the harvesting. The only way to automate the harvesting is by using TNT, but this is very expensive unless you want to use a TNT duping machine, which as some of you already know I will never use. The parts we can automate are turning dirt blocks into mud blocks with water bottles, removing empty glass bottles from the system, refilling those glass bottles with water and putting those water bottles back into the farm. So all you have to do is place dirt, press a button, wait for the mud to turn into clay, harvest the clay and repeat. The system will do do the rest. There's a big problem with many other clay farms that I found on YouTube. The first being that the creators are titling their videos as automatic, when in fact they are semi-automatic. And the second is that these farms are still tedious because they use a piston system that requires you to continuously place dirt blocks, whilst the dispenser dispenses water bottles and pistons push the mud blocks into a collective section. Whilst this system is still better than doing it all manually, my system is better because you can come to the farm, harvest the clay, replace the dirt and then go off and do other Minecraft activities whilst your mud turns into clay. You don't need to stay with the farm for it to operate and you only need to go back to harvest as and when you need clay for your Minecraft builds. This is my clay farm. It looks a little intimidating, but it's really not. It's just one segment like this repeated over and over again. Each segment has five main components that serve different functions. These functions are turning dirt blocks into mud blocks with a dispenser and water bottles, drying out mud blocks and turning them into clay blocks using dripstone, removing the empty glass bottles from the dispenser using a simple item sorter, a water channel pushing empty glass bottles into an item elevator, injecting water bottles back into dispensers using Using hoppers and a hopper minecart. Additionally, I've also added two other redstone modules to the system that you only need to build once. The first is an automatic water bottling system that takes glass bottles, fills them with water and then injects them back into the hopper minecart system for them to be distributed among the dispensers. The second module is an item elevator that takes empty glass bottles from the bottom of the farm and moves them up to the water bottling station above the farm. As you can see, I've been through several iterations of this farm and have now fine-tuned it for accuracy, efficiency and automation. I'll show you how to build the farm at the end of the video, but I think it's far more important for you to understand how each of the components work. The first component is turning dirt blocks into mud blocks using dispensers and water bottles and using dripstone to turn the mud blocks into clay blocks. On this single segment you can see I have a pointed dripstone, a random block and a dirt block just as I showed you earlier and attached to this I have a dispenser filled with water bottles and a redstone circuit to activate it. When I press this button the dirt block turns into a mud block. 
It's important that you use a dispenser and not a dropper, as a dropper will spit the water bottle out instead of dispensing it to the dirt. You can see from the slightly larger version how the segments go together and how they are attached to a single redstone circuit. Also note that each segment has another segment mirrored on the opposite side. This is as wide as you can go. You can't introduce another row of dirt blocks in the middle because there is no way of dispensing water to them and no way of attaching them to the rest of the redstone circuits. So you can only have two rows per farm, but you can make these rows as long as you like, making this farm infinitely expandable. Now we have dispensed water to the dirt blocks, the next problem to solve is removing the empty glass bottle that is now inside the dispenser. We can do this by using an item sorter. This item sorter will remove empty glass bottles from the dispenser while leaving the water bottles untouched. There are many types of item sorters, but I've used this one because it's tileable, meaning you can build as many as you like right next to each other without any negative effects. This is what happens when I add glass bottles into the dispenser. It gets filtered out and spat out by the dropper below. This works because of this redstone circuit. And from the way that these two hoppers are set up. Hoppers have a push and a pull function. The push function pushes items out into the direction the hopper is facing. And as you can see here, this hopper is pointing into the comparator. And because comparators are not capable of receiving items, the hopper's push function is disabled. So now the top hopper can only pull items from its top side, which in this case is pulling items from the dispenser above. The bottom hopper still has the ability to pull and push. So it can pull items from the hopper above and push items into the dropper below. But because of this redstone circuit, this hopper can only pull and push when the circuit is activated. And that's because this hopper has been disabled by a redstone torch. Redstone signals pointing directly into a hopper like this will disable it. So the remaining redstone components here, which I haven't explained yet, are designed to disable the redstone torch, which will then allow the bottom hopper to pull and push items again. To understand the rest of the circuit, you first need to understand how hoppers produce redstone signals. Hoppers produce a redstone signal with the strength being dependent on the number of items inside. We can read and transmit this signal to other objects using a comparator. In this example, the comparator reads the signal from the hopper and sends it to the redstone lamps via redstone dust and repeaters. Repeaters extend the redstone signals, but in this example they are primarily used to redirect the signal into the redstone lamps. Look what happens if I put 22 stackable items inside the hopper. You see that the first lamp gets lit. This is because the amount of items inside the hopper only produces a signal strength of 1. If I put 23 stackable items inside the hopper, then the hopper signal strength increases to 2, lighting the second lamp. If I put 46 stackable items inside, then the signal strength increases to 3, lighting the third lamp. It's worth noting that non-stackable items produce a stronger signal, but we won't be using these, so don't worry about this for now. So how does this mechanic work with our item sorter? Well, as I mentioned before, this torch is deactivating the bottom hopper, meaning it can't pull or push items out. The only way for this hopper to start working again is for this redstone torch to be deactivated, which is what the rest of the circuit does. We have to create a strong enough signal in the top hopper to reach all three of these redstone dust. This means we need a redstone signal strength for free. Once a signal strength for free is produced, the last piece of redstone dust has received a signal, and then this repeater redirects and boosts that signal into the redstone torch, deactivating it, which will then allow the bottom hopper to function again. Once this happens, the bottom hopper will start pulling items from the top hopper and pushing those items into the dropper below, and will continue to do so until the top hopper stops producing a signal strength for free, which will only happen once there are 45 or less stackable items inside it. So right now the bottom hopper is deactivated, which means we can put 45 items inside the top hopper without them being removed. If the top hopper has 46 items inside, the bottom hopper will activate and pull one item out of the top hopper. Now we want to permanently set this hopper up by putting 45 items inside. 41 of those are going to be glass bottles, which will sit in the first slot. And then we want to put a random stackable item in each of the other slots to make up the 45. We do this because hoppers always start pulling from the first slot and won't pull from the second slot until the first is empty and so on and we want four other random items that are not part of the system to block off the other spaces. This now means that our hopper can only pull empty glass bottles from the dispenser, and there is no space for the water bottles to go. And because hoppers always pull starting from the first slot, these random items will never leave the hopper. Here is a functioning version. The dispenser is full of water bottles. When I push this button, the dispenser dispenses a water bottle to the dirt, and then the empty glass bottle gets transported to and spat out by the dropper below. I'll be getting into the loading system later, but for now, here is is an example of a single segment of the farm with the minecart system on top. This dispenser, hopper and hopper minecart are all full of water bottles. When I activate the system, the used water bottle, now an empty bottle, is spat out by the dropper below and a new water bottle is injected into the dispenser automatically. Next, let's look at what to do with those water bottles that the dropper keeps spitting out. To transport the water bottles to our desired location, we want to use a water stream like this. But a single water source block only travels for eight blocks, unless it starts to travel downwards like this. But because 
because the clay farm is infinitely expandable, we don't want to do this. If we did keep dropping the water every 8 blocks, then reintroducing those water bottles into our farm becomes much more difficult, not to mention the additional amount of space that the water stream would take. Instead, we could use packed ice and a sign like this to keep our water bottles on flat land whilst they're being transported. Ice allows items to slide over them and into the next water stream. Normally, this would be the best method for water item transportation, but this doesn't actually work in my clay farm. And that's because of the way the droppers are set up. Looking at this example and with how the droppers will be set up, all of the droppers are above flowing water, all except one. So in this design, bottles being spat out by the hopper will get stuck by this ice. This is happening because glass bottles being spat out by this dispenser have very little horizontal momentum. The solution to this problem means introducing another hopper and dropper component. In this example, the water flows towards a hopper. When the glass bottles enter this hopper, they are sent to this dropper, which then spits them out into the next water stream. And now the dropper above doesn't spit its glass bottles onto ice. It spits them directly into a hopper. So every time the water stream ends, we have to add this auto dropper. It's a very simple design. Items that go into the hopper are then sent to the dropper. The comparator reads the signal from the dropper and sends that signal to the sticky piston. The sticky piston opens, raising this observer. When two observers are facing each other, they constantly send signals to each other, which is what's happening here. And the signal being produced is sent to the dropper, activating it, allowing it to spit out all of its items. So we have to continuously build these into our water streams like this. Alternatively, you can use hoppers instead of water streams, but too many hoppers cause a lot of SPS drop, and we want to avoid this as much as possible, especially if your PC is on the slower end. Now let's look at the complete farm to understand the final components. Here are the water streams, they lead into this hopper, glass bottles entering this hopper will be pushed into the item elevator module, which will bring them all the way up here to this water bottling station module. This bottling station is the same design I used in the water streams, the only difference being that this is a dispenser, not a dropper. Dispensing glass bottles into water like this fills them up and once each bottle has been filled up the hopper below picks them up and pushes the now water bottles into the other hoppers. The hopper minecart will then come by and take one glass bottle from each hopper as it passes which is why I've chosen five hoppers here. This way every time a hopper minecart passes it will fill up all of its five slots and then as you already know that minecart distributes those water bottles to all the dispensers. Let me quickly show you this item elevator. So all of these are droppers. Droppers have the ability to push items into other objects. Dispensers can't do this. Once the items enter the bottom dropper, this comparator reads that signal and sends that signal to the redstone torch. And as I explained during the item sorter segment, this redstone torch is disabling this hopper. And now these two hoppers work a little bit differently. If I place two hoppers facing each other like this, and I place an item inside of one of them, both hoppers will begin to pass that item back and forth. The only thing stopping this from happening in this case is this redstone torch. But once glass bottles enter the system, this redstone torch deactivates allowing these hoppers to continue passing the item back and forth. And when this happens, this comparator here reads the signal being produced from this hopper and sends that signal all the way to the top through these redstone torches. And every time one of the redstone torches next to a dropper activates, that activates that particular dropper. So if there is a glass bottle inside, it will be pushed to the next dropper and so on until it reaches the water bottling station. Okay. It's time to show you how to build this. Right here, I've got two segments mirrored. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy this five times. So we're going to make a five wide version. You can make it as long as you like. Longer is the better. But for the demonstration, I'm going to be doing it five wide. A few things to take note of is this comparator. Make sure that these two prongs are facing into this hopper and this hopper is facing into these uh, comparator. The repeater is facing into this block. This is a dropper pointing down. This is a dispenser pointing into the dirt. And for the pointed dripstone, you'll notice that it's not here right now. Don't include it until the very end, otherwise we'll struggle to install the water streams. So for now, let's make a five wide version of this. Once you've done, Go to this level and fill in all these hoppers with your 45 items. I would recommend starting with your 4 random items first and then put the glass bottles in. Because if you accidentally put more of the random items in, they're actually going to get drained out into the hopper and into the dropper and it can actually clog up the system. Uh, I'll explain why later. Okay, next we're going to connect our redstone circuit up like this. And I'm going to lower the button just slightly so that we can avoid the minecart track. You can pretty much put this button wherever you like. 
I'm going to put it here for demonstration purposes, but you'll probably have a better idea of where you want to put it that fits your build and what you kind of design around this. The only thing I would say is that make sure that if you have this longer, make sure that this circuit can reach the very end of the uh, dispenser. The very last two dispensers on the end, it needs to reach that. So you use repeaters to extend this line. Next, we're going to put the minecart rail. With the minecart rail, as you saw over here, I have created this circle. And I create this circle because what's going to happen is it's going to load all these dispensers faster. That's actually a good thing when you initially set this up. Because when you first set this up, it's going to take a long time to get all these dispensers filled with only one minecart. So what you can actually do is you can put multiple minecarts on. Like this. Let it fill up all dispensers and then once it's done, you can remove all the minecarts that are excess. You only really need one for this size. If you've got it larger, then maybe you'll have a couple of more minecarts on there. But in general, once the farm is complete, you're probably going to want to have it just so it, it doesn't loop. So it just goes back and forth and back and forth. And that's because this area over here is basically going to be the entrance. So you imagine that you, you actually put this button a bit lower like this. Now you need to walk into this area. So this could be like your footpath right here. I mean, you'd have to put the button over here. You button be there. You, you you walk down here. Here's your pathway, and you start jumping into the farm and start your uh, start your harvesting. I'm gonna leave that to you guys because that's your design. Whatever you want to build around this is entirely up to you. You can do whatever. And then we do the rail like this. And next is powering the redstone. I used redstone blocks like this. Now these are expensive. If you want to just use redstone blocks, it's going to cost quite a lot of redstone. And I chose this because it's a little bit more compact, but you don't have to use this. You can also just use a redstone torch like this. So you could just do that. That's a much cheaper way and it doesn't interfere with any of the other redstone circuits. Now just dig out a little area like this. It doesn't need to be perfect. We just want a little space to work with and also we are lowering it down a little bit so that the water stream can flow into the item elevator. Okay we're now going to build the item elevator and as you can see here I have extended this out by two because I just realized that it's going to get in the way of our minecart hopper. So we actually need to move just one side out a couple of extra blocks and then what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we see this redstone circuit right here this first line of redstone next to the comparator we're going to go here and then we're going to look at this we're going to go down we're going to leave a one block gap and then we're going to start placing droppers so we actually need 10 droppers so we're going to go one two three four five six seven eight nine and then for the ten we're going to go here and face it in this direction. Next, we're going to go to the bottom and we're going to go leave this empty. We're going to go right to the left and we're going to go all the way up like this. And then we're going to go back down and starting from this block, we're going to take out one this side, one this side, one this side and so on all the way to the top. Then we're going to get our comparator and we're going to face the single prong into that block. We're going to get hoppers and we're going to face two hoppers into each other like this. And then we're going to put an item inside. I'm just going to put a redstone torch. And as you can see, now these hoppers are passing that item back and forth. It doesn't matter what item you put in there. You just need to make sure you only put one. Okay, and then we're going to come here and we're going to put a block here. And we're going to put another comparator right there with the two prongs facing into the dropper. And then we're going to get a hopper and place it pointing into that dropper as well. Then we're going to get a redstone torch. We're going to put one here and one here. And now you notice that I've put this one, this has stopped flashing. This is moving, I put this here, it's no longer flashing, this is no longer moving. That redstone has deactivated those hoppers. Now we're gonna go to the back and we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And then we're gonna go in here and do the same. We're gonna go to the other side and on this side, we're just gonna do the inside ones. We're not gonna put any here, so just on the inside. And I'm going to put a chest right here, just temporarily. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put the glass bottles inside the hopper. And there we go. We just want to test that it's working before we continue. And as you can see, it is definitely working. Okay, next is going to be the water bottling station. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to put some temporary blocks here. I'm going to create six temporary blocks. I'm going to get rid of these five. I'm going to get a hopper and I'm going to face them in this direction like this. Now I want to put a glass block here get rid of these corners, get a water bucket and we're gonna put that in there. Then we get a temporary block like this. We get a dispenser. 
and we're going to face it down like that. Get rid of these. Next, I'm going to get a comparator and I'm going to put it on top of this glass with the two prongs facing into the dispenser. Then we get a sticky piston and we put a sticky piston right here facing up. We're going to go to the back and we're going to put an observer with the red dot facing this direction. Put a temporary block on top of the observer and go to this side and put another observer right here with the red dot facing in this direction. And there you go. That is the water bottling station complete and it is connected to the elevator. So let's give it a little test. So let's go to this hopper and we put in our water bottles and look at that. It is now working. So these hoppers are going to fill up. This hopper minecart is going to pick them up and it's going to start distributing all of those water bottles to the dispensers and hoppers. So if you build a larger version of this, it's going to take a long time to fill up all the hoppers and dispensers. So what I would say do is just come down here and just throw a whole bunch of empty glass bottles into this hopper. Let that continue to fill while you build the rest of the uh, farm. Okay, now to build our water streams. So to start the water streams, this part at the very beginning is going to be a little bit different because we actually need to connect it up to our water elevator but after this the parts that you build continuously if you're going to build really large farms it's just going to be repetitive you're going to do the same thing over and over but to start let's take some glass and we're going to come over here to this hopper and we're going to block off this part right here so that no water can go past there and then we're going to come behind the droppers and we're just going to put a row of glass behind them same for this side like this only for this side we're going to get rid of this one and we're going to put one right there and then we'll come back to this side and then we're just going to put a row like that so now if you look we've got a little pathway for the water to go let's go through the other side because that side's blocked now we're going to come here on this side we're going to put an ice block right here and then we're going to put a glass block right here and then we're going to put a sign like that okay and now we want to bring these out all the way and we're going to test this so let's count first so water source blocks travel eight blocks let's count from here which is where we want it to end so one two three four five six seven eight so if my calculations are correct we can put water here and that should make it all the way here and it does perfectly Okay, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to get rid of that just temporarily. This is five wide and that's fine. This will work perfectly on its own, but it's not going to be very much clay. It's going to be kind of pointless, to be honest. So you're actually going to want to build this much, 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 much longer. So we're actually going to have to build those item dropper that shoots out, uh, that shoots the water out from the floor into the new water stream. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at where our eighth block was. So... The water source block started right here. So where the water source block starts, we're going to put a dropper like this. I'm going to get rid of this glass block and we're going to have an observer facing this way. So the red dot should be facing in to this dropper right here. Same for this side and get an observer, red dot facing into this dropper. And then let's just dig out a little area like this. And then on the block right behind the dropper, we are going to put a comparator with the two prongs facing in to the dropper. And then we're going to get rid of this block and we're going to put a sticky piston right there. And then we're going to have to come this way and we're going to put a, another observer right there. And now we're going to get a hopper and we're going to place a hopper pointing in to that dropper. Let's give it a little test. There we go. That works perfectly. That's one complete. And then we do the other side and one more time. So the block where the dropper is, and we're going to put a comparator right there. We're going to go behind here and we're going to put a sticky piston. And then we're going to put a observer like, uh, like this. And that, the eye should be right there. Perfect. And then we're going to put a hopper facing in to the dropper. Let's test it again. And that works perfectly. Now we can get our glass and we can do like this. And then we want to put signs on top of the hoppers. And now when we put our water source blocks back on top of these droppers, the water is going to flow into that direction. Okay, now that's done. You need to close off this area as well, right there. But make sure you don't close this one. And now to give this a little test, let's throw half a stack of glass bottles in here. Half a stack in here. And let's have a look. 
Perfect. Now, one thing to note here is look what's happening right now. I am standing on this glass and a lot of those glass bottles are actually going into my inventory. So when you're using this farm, you really want to stay away from any of the areas that have water streams because you can pull those glass bottles into your inventory. You do not want to do that. I'm going to go over some of the problems that you're going to face in case you need to problem solve when you build this farm for yourself. Uh, but just know that you need to stay away from the water streams. I highly recommend doing this part now before you continue to extend the rest of the farm because the rest of the farm is going to be repeated very easily but you might struggle to include these glass bottle droppers if you've already got water flowing through i'm not going to build the rest of this i'm just giving you a quick example of how we would do it so the hopper is going to go in here and then we have the dropper like that signs here and if we get our water we should have eight blocks perfectly so on these ones you don't need to have the water going over the top of the hopper because when the water gets pushed through it will just land in the hopper no problem and then the dropper that's going to be in this position is going to shoot items straight into that hopper okay, it's a little bit different to how we had it over here because over here we have the water flowing on top of the hopper and the reason for that is is because we're going around this bend so if we didn't have the water flowing into the hopper any items coming down here would have just hit this wall and would have just been stuck here. So that's why we float it in here. But you don't need to do that with uh, with the rest of this. So you get a full eight blocks after every hopper. And the absolute very last thing to do is to come down here and put your pointed dripstone like this. If you do not do this, then the farm will not work. Before I end the video, let's go over some problems and solutions. Some problems I came across and solutions I found. And you're probably going to come across one or more of these problems for yourself. The first first one is when you first use this for the very first time you're not going to get any glass bottles coming out and the reason for that is because this doesn't run continuously this runs per cycle so every time I press this button is one cycle so any glass bottles that are in this dispenser now that get pulled out are going to get pushed through one cycle and that one cycle is only going to push them to this first hopper it's not going to push them to the dropper it needs a second cycle to push them to the dropper so now if I look here it's empty. But when I use this farm, let's go for the first time, no glass bottles, but now we have a glass bottle in the hopper. Let's change this back to dirt and we use it again. And now we have glass bottles that now get recycled. And that brings me to my second point. These dispensers and these hoppers all need to be full. And after you've done that, have a little bit of extra stock in these hoppers right here. You're going to find that if you don't have enough stock to go around, half of your hoppers are going to be full and half are going to be empty. And that's going to result in only half of the farm working. The farm closest to the water station is going to be working and the half furthest away is not going to be working. To help you understand this, imagine this is where the water bottling station is and we have these droppers. This is the beginning and this is the end. Now we have this hopper minecart with three water bottles and we have completely empty dispensers. What do you think is going to happen when I start this minecart track? Which dispensers do you think is going to receive the water bottles? If you said the first three, then you'd be correct. And the last two didn't receive any. So if you've got a water bottle shortage for any reason, like you've come near the water stream and you've pulled them out of the system, or you've stood here and you've pulled them out of here, then you're going to have a water shortage. So when you use the farm, only half the farm is going to work. After you've used the farm for the first time, restock up this with water bottles because you don't want to have a shortage. The next problem, which is a big problem that I came across and I couldn't figure out for quite a while. For some reason, sometimes the farm would work, sometimes it wouldn't. And what I was finding is as I was building this and I was playing around with it, I was removing stuff and adding stuff, some items were dropping it inside the hoppers and they were actually clogging it up. So sometimes these dispensers were trying to like dispense rails, for example, and then obviously they're not going to dispense anything. They're just going to get spat out um, or they can actually clog up the system. So if they manage to get through to the system here, for some reason, they actually start to collect inside these uh, droppers and you don't want that to happen because then that's actually going to affect the whole system. So before you actually start the farm, maybe just go through every hopper and every dispenser and every dropper. So check this hopper and check this hopper make sure they're all full of water bottles and nothing else check your item filter hoppers right here make sure you've got your 41 glass bottles and your filler items go down here check these droppers make sure they're completely empty these droppers should have no items inside and these hoppers will have one glass bottle inside if you've used the farm already or they're completely empty they shouldn't have anything else beyond one single glass bottle per hopper the second factor what can actually lead to water shortage is you using this farm i'm going to give you an example now i'm going to break the farm a little bit if i use this farm now when there's no dirt blocks there look what happens 
the water bottles get spat out because there's no dirt there for them to dispense to. So now you've just ejected water bottles out of the system. So always make sure that you have dirt here when you when you activate it. And if you accidentally activate it, it's not the end of the world. All you need to do is go and collect your water bottles and throw them back into the system, or you can let them despawn and then just top up the water bottling station with some empty glass bottles. And guys, that's about it for this video. I would love to see what you're going to do with this design, how you're going to integrate it into your worlds and your builds. If you manage to do something really amazing then post your pictures online and, and let me know so I can check them out. This video took a long time to make so if you liked it give it a like and subscribe to see future content. Take it easy.